and throwing them out the window. <laughs> Welcome to Mystery Maniacs. Mystery Maniacs is a comedy recap podcast dedicated to mystery TV. Each week we dig into an episode of the show, including the murders, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. This week, Father Brown, The Man in the Tree, Season 1, Episode 4, I'm Mark. Oh, are you? Are you like foreign Mark or something? Mark. (laughs) I'm Sarah. I realized watching this again that... No, actually, I'm Tom Hanks. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Somebody said they thought from your voice you would look like Tom Hanks. I realized watching this episode that I thought uh, I thought about how many episodes of shows start with either a man hanging from a tree or dead in a tree, mysteriously in a tree of some Lots sort. Lots of trees. There's the Murdoch. There's this one. Yep. Then there's a show where somebody's uh, parachuted into a tree. Yep. I can't remember I who that remember is, that and either. they find him. Yeah, one where that person is dead, and another one where he they take him in and hide him. Yeah, so that's like two of them. It's I a lot of dudes I can't identify, but there's at least four mystery shows yep. episodes that start with dudes and trees. Yeah, but they call this the man in the tree. If they called it the dude in the tree, it would be quite different. It'd be it? very different. <laughs> He'd have like cowboy boots and everything. The hombre in the tree. Hombre. Before we dive in, I have recommendations. Excellent. Because I thought, hey, it's things. Thanksgiving week here in the U.S. If you're elsewhere, you can also enjoy Thanksgiving vibes. For the people outside of the U.S., it's like a week holiday in the middle of November. I don't really understand it. I've been here 20 some years. It's supposedly related to pilgrims and Mayflowers and stuff, but really it's just an excuse to eat a lot of really good food, hang out with family, and take a few days off. Apparently watch the football. Yes, the American football. If You are looking for something to watch on TV, however, that is not football or parades or Hallmark shows, Yeah, which seem to be a thing now. (laughs) These like giant... Don't understand those movies, I'm sorry. Marathon of formulaic Hallmark movies. Sorry if you like them. If you're looking for something else to watch, I have some recommendations. Excellent. And on a side note, a few people have asked if I would start a thread on the Mystery Maniac subreddit that is just for recommendations. And I'm going to do that. Yes. And I'm going to plans are in the works. I'm going to put these on there along with others that I have mentioned in previous episodes. So here we go. A few things that you can catch. So uh, you can get a piece of paper out and a pen or memorize it or whatever. I don't know. Look in the show notes because I'll probably put it in the show notes because you'll link to it. So the first one is a show that we just watched recently on Netflix called Bodies. Which started as a graphic novel. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a time traveling murder mystery. I'm going to say it's a little bit dark. Yep. It is a tiny bit gory. Yep. But the mystery is very good. And unlike a lot of time travel shows, they stick the ending. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like mystery plus sci-fi. Yep. But the time travel really isn't the important part. The thing that is important is that everybody from the future has bad hair. Yes. <laughs> really bad hair. That's what we have to look forward to in 50 years, according to this show. However, the mystery is really good. So it's yes. called Bodies. And it's on Netflix. Then I have a couple of BritBox recommendations. These are kind of hidden gems that maybe you don't know are there because they've been there for a while. So one of them is the Gil Mayo Mysteries. Yes. They're um, kind of light. They're kind of funny. They take a little bit of suspension of disbelief, but they're really good. I mean, they're single. There's a cute little love story involved. They're single episode mysteries. They're really fun. The team is good. There's a nerd who they call Anorak. You know, it's it's just fun. The team is very good. The detective is quirky, but competent, you know, which is always nice. So that's the Gil Mayo Mysteries. Check those out. Those are on BritBox right now. Another BritBox show that is relevant to what we're covering today is Murder in Provence. Yes. And this stars Roger Allen. Yes. Who has been in Midsummer, but he's also in uh, Endeavor. He he is the origin of the... Of the shepherd's and, pie being buried yes. in the field in midsummer, and the origin of the triumvirate, which is being in Morse, Endeavor, and Lewis. 
Yes. He may be the only human who has done that. Yes, I agree. But also Nancy Carroll is in them, who plays Lady Felicia and Father Brown. It's a, I don't, it didn't receive very positive reviews when they released it because I think people were confused. It takes place in Provence and Roger Allen plays a barrister who you would think, oh, that's a lawyer. But in France, a barrister is like a detective, sort of. They don't speak in French accents, even though they're in France. And that's kind of strange, but they are supposed to be French, not like Brit expats. But if you can put all that aside, their relationship is really fun. They solve murders together, mysteries together. The scenery is beautiful. Yep. Murder in Provence. And then I've just got two little uh, side ones. Mm -hmm. These are both on Acorn that... Again, people may have missed them because they're not big shows. There's like one or two seasons, but they're totally worth a watch. One is Kingdom, which has Stephen Fry in it. Kingdom is fantastic. He plays a lawyer. If you ever watched like Northern Exposure or what's the Martin Clune one where he plays the doctor? Uh, Doc Holliday. No, (laughs) it's not Doc (laughs) Holliday. Doc Martin. Doc Martin. (laughs) It threw me because that's his first name. It's kind of like that. It's like a little seaside town. It's full of characters. But Stephen Fry is amazing in it. It's just really good. Everybody who's in it. sister is amazing. Yeah. And you'll keep shouting like, Midsummer, Midsummer. The the echo terrorist twin brothers are fantastic. Yes. (laughs) It's just it's just quirky and it's just really fun. It'll make you smile. And that and that's on Acorn. It's called Kingdom. And then my very last recommendation for this week is really out there. It's also, like I said, it's also on Acorn and it's called Ladies of Letters. And Ladies of Letters is not a mystery. There's no crime. There's no attorney. So it's kind of outside of our box. But if you like funny. If you like Mrs. M and yes. Father Brown, you should watch Ladies of Letters. It's about two women who were friends earlier in life who now exchange letters. They have very different lives. Oh, they're very And different. it's completely told through their letters. And It's based on a radio show, and it is hilarious. It's it is incredibly scathing funny. and smart, yeah. and they're like one-upping each other all the time and judging each other all the time, but in these friendly, passive-aggressive ways. You you get to see the, the character like narrating their letter like they're writing the letter out loud but while they live their lives and so you get to see this contrast between what they claim is going on in their lives and what's actually going on and it's just so funny so it's called ladies of letters and it's also on acorn i think there's only one season of it yeah um but it is so funny it's fantastic you gotta you gotta give it a shot you initially you're like ah i don't know about this get two episodes into it and you'll really appreciate it yep so that's my recommendations for this week. Bodies, Murder in Provence, The Gil Mayo Mysteries, Kingdom, and Ladies of Letters. Excellent. That's plenty to keep you busy. Yes. Because next week we'll have another Father Brown remix and we will have another one the week after that. Yes. So if you've already listened to the Father Brown episodes five and six before and you know you skim through the remix to get the goodie parts that are added, the new bits, and you need something to to fill your time. There's five shows for you to choose from. Yes, and welcome new list. We definitely have new listeners uh, since we started doing Father Brown. We've seen a change in the numbers and that's fantastic. Yeah. And so new listeners, uh, we covered three episodes from Father Brown roughly a year ago when we were experimenting with the format. And now that we're doing full seasons, we didn't think to redo those episodes. No. So five and six will have old Sarah and Mark. A year ago, Sarah and Mark. <laughs> We've changed so I don't, much. I don't know what we'll be talking about. No. And then after that, we will return with all sorts of goodies for the new year and Christmas. Yes. As we like to do. Are you ready to talk about the man in the tree? I am ready to see Lady F walking through a field at the golden hour. I could have watched that scene for 10 hours. She's got the hat on. She's got her art supplies and her wedge shoes. It needs to be on the big screen. Yeah, it's very pretty. Until the blood drips on her face. (laughs) Until the blood drips on her face. And she has the big scream. (sighs) Still she has the big... Is this the first Lady Felicia scream episode? I don't know, but Nancy Carroll is always good for a scream. She was good at screaming in Midsummer too. Because they they lean into it hard at some point. Okay, 
if blood dripped on my face from a tree, I would scream. I would also. Or um, just pass out. Especially if it's. Or throw a, up. It's a dude with his. <laughs> and he's moaning. His <laughs> sock suspenders on. <laughs> I watched this on BritBox via Amazon Prime, right? Yep. So Amazon Prime does the x-ray thing where they've got the trivia and the actor information and stuff up on screen if you have her on screen. The trivia for this one, it's not trivia. I, th- I think it comes right from IMDb. Yeah. It should be ca- called either the um actually corner or the pedant corner. Like, the, it's not trivia, that Mrs. M wouldn't put her casserole on the stove. She'd put it in the oven. That is not trivia. No, that's that's your opinion. That is pedant corner stuff. Yes, absolutely. Like, just turn that off. Just, uh, the guy in the tree isn't dead. No, but he's bleeding. <laughs> well, because he fell from a train, theoretically out a window from a viaduct and was lucky enough to land in the tree. They do a good job of not showing the viaduct here because, of course, it's nowhere near where oh, the no. viaduct is. Well, you see it once. Yes. Uh, when they're carrying him out. In no relation to, to the this ambulance. Tree. <laughs> right. As soon as they say viaduct, I'm, I'm like having trauma f- flashbacks from that stupid time team where they dig for a viaduct for a whole episode and they don't even find it. In Wales, they dig the biggest hole they've oh ever Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It's like 10 stories deep looking for a viaduct for a train underground. Ugh. And they conclude at the end of it, and I know this is spoilers, for a reality show that's 20 years old. Yes. <laughs> they conclude that maybe it was torn down and they took away all the pieces. Yes. I guess it's not here anymore. <laughs> Wow. It's the worst time team episode ever. No, no. Second worst. Second worst. (laughs) Only people who've watched time team will understand that. So Father There's a train and I got excited because I looked up the train. I know exactly what train it is. But then I realized I'd looked up that train. (laughs) Yes. It's the same train. (laughs) The same train. Which, you know, it would be. How how many, this is not a hustling and bustling place. How many trains actually come here? No. To Kemblford. And I I have a burning question for you, Sarah. Okay. Father Brown picks up Father Frank. Mm -hmm. Why he's called Father Frank, I don't know. Is that his first name or his last name? Is it a monetary name? He's from Germany. Why is it Frank? All sorts of problems with that name. But he's not called Father Deutschmark. <laughs> a Frank would be French. He is now. <laughs> <laughs> so he's there to pick up Father Deutschmark because Bishop Talbot, who we see in later episodes, mm-hmm. who is without a doubt an idiot. Yes. If Fa- Bishop Talbot picked him up, would any would of this happen? Father Deutschmark get away with all this? I don't know if. If the bishop met him from the train, would he have just escorted him to Kemblford? His the whole plan is for him to stay in Kemblford. Why? So, <laughs> to to give this the peace sermon on a Tuesday, <laughs> I guess. And the bishop was going to be there just to meet him on the train. I mean, I didn't. I don't know. I, I is he touring? I, uh, is he going other places too? <laughs> is Father so... Deutschmark, you know, next stop Liverpool? I don't know. Okay. And also, okay, so let's get this out of the way. The original Father Frank is a Nazi doctor. No. Is a Nazi. Yes. Nazi priest. A Nazi who became a priest. Yes. Why on earth would this guy want to go to England? Because he hates like, why would he not want to go, like... Because he oh, wants to flaunt... I'm going to go to Argentina for a, for a holiday. Disappear! Yeah. Like, dude, you know you lost the war. I just want to know who's running the priest exchange program. Because they're not screening the priest that they're sending around. No. What did you do before you entered the priesthood? Oh, you were a Nazi? And you killed yeah. people. Okay, let's send you to England. I can't believe that this episode is happier, funnier, and low, less low-key than the last episode. Yes. And it has Nazis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of like sort of traumatized by last week's episode and I the think effort so. that it took to, ha- to make it fun. And it was an effort, people. 
I oh, hope by it, the way, one of our most listened to yeah, episodes. <laughs> because people are like, they can't do it. They can't do it. I dare them to make fun of this stuff. I dare them. But afterwards, you said, well, at least next week's episode is just about a Nazi. <laughs> and I was like, phew, that's good. <laughs> Well, no one blames you personally, Father Deutschmark. We know that you weren't a Nazi. Oh, oh, but you were. <laughs> sort of. If you were actually the him. So they meet, they meet Father Frank on the train. Yep. And Sid gets off the train rather rapidly oh, because sneaky. he's just found money in a wallet and stole yep. it. And Annie gets off the train. <laughs> the bad girl of Kimballford. <laughs> The bad middle-aged girl from Kimball. They do such a good job at making her human and not a stereotype and interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that... For such a short episode, she's a pretty filled out character. She is. She's a criminal, but she's not evil. She's nasty, but she has a reason. And she's only nasty to people who deserve it. And later on, and we didn't talk about this... And we should have. She names people that go to his church. Yes. Not like, <laughs> like that's always the veiled thread of the prostitute. Like yes. the people who come to see me, you wouldn't believe. No, and she's she, like Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith. Yeah. Like your she, friend, Bob. She names people to him. <laughs> Dave Brown's is a little like, rough. <laughs> I should really take notes about this. <laughs> <laughs> she's not holding back. So Annie's just gotten out of prison. <laughs> so, she's been in prison for a year. Yep. Which I think she's been in prison for prostitution. I think so. Because she's the madam of Kimbleford, I guess. I, well, I love how, <laughs> the, and this is a great characterization thing here. They, this is not a C.K. Chester, G.K. Chesterson story. Right. This is original. So, so this is original. And they do, they try to maybe cram a little too much 50s England in it, but they do a good job. But Mrs. M won't say prostitution. And then Lady Felicia says, and the prostitution didn't help either. Well, Father Brown says Annie's had a rough life. Yeah. And Mrs. M says, well, that doesn't excuse her being rude. And Lady Felicia says, but it does explain the prostitution. <laughs> Soiree at my place later. Bye. That's clearly the best joke so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, she only came to church to get up people's noses. Yes. That's such a great phrase. Yeah. Because you know exactly how annoying it is to have something in your nose. Yes. <laughs> She's in your nose. So there's a nice viaduct and there's an ambulance that says Birmingham on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where's Birmingham? Do you know where it is? I don't know where it is in relationship to where Kimbleford is supposed to be. So Kimbleford's supposed to be in the sort of Middle East okay. of England. And Birmingham's like right in the middle. So it's probably the biggest close city. Okay. So... I, Though it does take him to the local village hospital, not yes. to Birmingham. And um, Mrs. M mentions Coventry and the cathedral being destroyed. Yes. That was also very close. Yes. They absolutely would have. Majorly damaged in World yeah. War II. I feel legitimately bad for Susie during this episode because she's been traumatized by this war. Understandably so. And then there's a German in the house. Yeah. I, I can't imagine how that would feel. Like it is implied, it's never said, but it's implied that Susie has lost her family. Well, her father specifically, yeah, specifically they do mention. And that they're, but her whole family, she's a refugee. Yeah. She has nobody. Like not treated by Polish people, uh, by German people nicely. Oh my gosh. The Poles were and treated it, and it just, some of the worst. It just must have been. And I, I use this word. Not to belittle it, but the level of discomfort and uncomfort in Europe for like 10 years later. Oh, for 50 years. Yeah. To this day, there are still people who can't shake yeah. that connotation. But man, the to the Nazis, the Poles were disposable people. Yep. Period. Absolutely. So... She got out of that. She escaped that, got to England, settles in this little safe place. Where she's being treated really well. And, and then the bad guy shows up in her yeah. home, basically. Uh, I can't. I think she's actually very restrained. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, 
Father Deutschmark Frank is very kind to her. He, I can only imagine what the real Father Frank would have been like. Oh, he would have been horrific. He would have been making jokes under his breath at her. Yeah. He would have been hideous. So, okay. So let's go over this thing that they do really well here. So you, Father Frank gets off the train. You know that he is somehow related to the guy who is in the tree. Mm -hmm. So you are assuming the first time you view this, that the person playing Father Frank is actually the Nazi and is trying to escape. Yes. And that he's pushed a priest out of a train. So you feel bad for to Bill. Yeah. <laughs> William. Sometimes they call him so Billy. You, so you, so you feel bad for that. And then they do the thing that flips that, He's actually the Nazi. Yeah, that Bill is the Nazi. Bill's the Nazi. And, and the priest. And so the, you are kind of right, but but wrong. And so you, you can't even feel clever at figuring it out. You understand so you understand the doctor. Yeah. Like this man killed my family. Yeah. You actually have some sympathy for Father Frank. Yeah, absolutely. Even there's though a, he pushed a priest from a train. There's a incredibly good comic. Throw Frank from the train. Uh that came out in the fifties that is in a horror anthology like this, that is kind of like this idea mm -hmm. where a guy in New York sees a Nazi on a subway train and what he does about it. Yeah. Because trains were so ingrained in the psyche right. of what's going on here. Well, it's like seeing somebody on a plane now, yeah. but you couldn't push somebody from a plane. No, people would notice that. I think people would notice. Of course, this notice. is the train with nobody on it. We can confirm that Sid is on the train. Mm -hmm. Christy. Christy is on the train. Annie is on the train. <laughs> the Nazi and Dr. Frankenfurter. I mean, uh, <laughs> Father Frankenfurter. Wilhelm. Wilhelm. That appears to be the only people on the train. Yeah. Because wouldn't you go, that's not the priest I saw before. <laughs> like Sid would notice that. <laughs> <laughs> The priest changed clothes. And then he's like dragging him down the hall and throwing him out the window. I'm like, did nobody notice this? It was first class. Yeah. Things happen in first class and people look away. Yeah. That's just how they are in first class. <laughs> And he's got a boyfriend. He's on the train and she's still getting propositioned by men on the train. Well, they do a very Does good- Does she have a sign that says I'm no. a prostitute on? No, but if if a guy, they do a good job of saying, if a guy thinks there's any way in there, he's going to try it. If there's he, a chance. And, and like- You could, there's a remote chance that woman could be a prostitute. Like, I'm going to proposition her and see if it works. Like, let's How to go, get slapped. Let's go over Bill's crimes here. First of all, war criminal. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Second of all, I don't think he's a very good priest. No. I don't think he would be a very good priest. I don't think he would be sincere in his beliefs. No, no. Especially when he's confronted, he's like, hey, 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 I'm still a Nazi. <laughs> he's not like, oh, I no, I know no. what I did was wrong. I've no, I've saw God Com now. And complete, no, no, no. Completely no. like, he's, yeah, he's not redeemed. Nazi. <laughs> Incredible misogynist. He's like, oh, well, I'm alone on the train and so is she. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, he is horrible. Yeah. Like, throw him from the train yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> Put him back on the train. Toss him off again. Everybody can help. Everybody grab a limb. One, two, three. Toss him from the train. Taller viaduct is needed. <laughs> no trees. Sid's learning Polish to make Susie feel more at home. That is the most genuine, nice thing ever that he could do. Now, you'd been in the U.S. for quite a while when I met you. Yes, but, I've been here, oh, seven years, six, seven years. But but should I have learned some Canadian to make you feel more at home? <laughs> you, sh you should have. I don't sound Canadian anymore. Not anymore. You didn't when I met you either. No. But I thought about this, and I, I asked AI to generate some conversations with using Canadian. Oh. <laughs> like if, so I could, you know... Integrate them into our conversations to make you feel more welcome so in the this U.S. Is Sarah's Canadian phrase book. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> it was so horrible. Okay, 
I'm just going to read one of these conversations that it generated. Okay. Okay. This is, this is its best effort at Canadian slang. Okay. And conversations that would make you feel welcome here. Okay. Okay. How's it going? eh? Okay. People in Canada don't say a like that. Oh no. According to this, they say it at the end of every sentence. Oh, okay. okay? Sometimes in the middle. Hey. Not bad. Just chilling at the cottage with some Timmy's. Okay. Cottage. Cottage culture is big in Canada. Okay. And Timmy's is Tim Hortons. So yeah, this is okay. Nice. Sounds like a beauty day. It uh, that no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice out, eh? Wanna go for a rip on the lake? Uh go for a rip. I have gone for rips on the lake. Sure, I'm down. Let me grab my toque and mitts. Okay, why would you be going on the lo- lake? With your toque and your mitts. All right. Don't forget your parka. It's a bit nippy out there. Okay, no. (laughs) No worries. I'm used to it. I'm Canadian after all, eh? Well, Canadians do constantly refer to themselves and tell other people they are Canadian. True that, buddy. Let's go, eh? Yeah. (laughs) How do you feel? Do you feel more at home? No. No? No. This is like the Bob and Doug Canadian. <laughs> this is strange brew Canadian. Canadian bacon bacon. <laughs> yeah. The other one it generated was about hockey, and it did mention putting the biscuit in the basket. Yeah. And talked about the Leafs. Who won today, by the way, in Sweden. Um, And says, uh, it ends the conversation with, I got to go work off this Molson muscle. Catch you later, eh? I have no idea. That's a beer belly, apparently. Human has actually ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> now you should feel more welcome in our country. Mostly what Canadians say to me now is, can you explain the politics of the United States to us, please? Because we don't understand. <laughs> nope. No. No. I cannot. If they ask me the American, I would say, nope. What do you think of Christie's relationship with Annie? I think. Are they genuinely in love? I think, and and especially at the end, I do think they are fun and happy together. I think so too, and I like it. I, I like it a lot. I wish they weren't so stubborn about not talking about it because it causes some problems here. Not as much problems as the bishop not showing up. <laughs> but it does cause... Can a- you imagine? I can't stop thinking about this now, okay? So the bishop meets the priest. Yes. Fully accepts him. Now, let's let's say... Let's say he didn't... The priest didn't get thrown from the train. Okay, but okay. the actual Nazi priest gets yes. off the train. Yes. And the bishop meets him and then takes him to Kemblford and puts him in Father Brown's house. And Father Brown... Calls the bishop and he's like, Psst, he's a Nazi. And he'd be like, no, Father Brown, you're such a moron. You're always meddling in everything. You should stop and just and he, be a better priest. He's he, like, no, really? He's a Nazi. He, he keeps saluting and stuff. No, no, you're full of call it, Father Brown. Valentine. He's a Nazi. Yeah. Oh, come on, Father Brown. <laughs> Mrs. M would be like, you're just being too judgmental. You need to be more like Jesus. But he's a Nazi. He drew a swastika on the buns. He's a Nazi. That would have been a fun episode, too. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe the episode about Nazis is more fun than (laughs) the last episode. I think you're right about Christy and Annie, though I don't know how Christy makes a living. He's a rag and bone man, which means he buys and sells stuff. He begs. Well, but he also buys things from people and sells things to people. But in Kimbleford, what is that, 30 people? Yeah, it can't be a lot of people. Like, he doesn't even have to go around shouting, rag and bone, man. No. Because they're all like, there's a horse and buggy outside. It must be Christy. It's a very British thing, too. I do remember people stopping at our house when I was a kid asking if we had anything to sell. I would love that. Now, my father was a guy who sold stuff. Yeah. So he was a it might be dealer. different because of that. Let him come by our house and say, do you have anything you want to get rid of? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Back it up. You got a truck? Okay. <laughs> we'll load some stuff in there. If you you can... don't need to buy. No. No, we no, don't no. need any money for it. No. You can have it. Take all this stuff. It's yours. Take it away. <laughs> That's a big couch. Uh, yeah, it's your couch. Yeah. <laughs> Have this printer. <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I don't think that falls in the categories of rag or bone. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trash from our house. But you can't yell that while you're in your wagon. Trash from your house. Put it on my wagon. 
<laughs> oh boy. Is Christy wearing his jacket inside out? Yeah, at, at least in one scene he is. He is. Yeah. The lining is on the outside. The seams are inside out. It's weird. And then when Father Brown is sitting there talking about the St. Michael painting, the hanger's on sideways. I know mm. I'm in pedant corner now, Yeah, but the rope goes from top to bottom. You couldn't hang it up that way. St. Michael would be sideways like he was flying like Superman. <laughs> Well, okay. We then move to what I like to call Sid's problematic trailer. <laughs> Do you think that's on Lady Felicia's land? I think it probably is. I think it is too. Yep. Because she owns an estate. Now we know that Sid later on has ladies to this trailer. Yes. If the trailers are rocking, Sid's I, at home. <laughs> I Sid's at home, I guess. <laughs> but what's problematic to me is he has no awning and there's a lot of stuff out there. What if it rains? It gets wet. You only put the stuff outside that you don't mind getting wet, I there, guess. There are some things there that I looked at them and I was like, mm, no. I, that he grabs it and puts it inside. Oh I don't know. What if he's like stealing a wallet or something? If he's off busy riding his motorcycle and it starts raining? Never mind the fact that we miss Lady F's party. The and soiree. Sid's entrance. The barn soiree. Yes. Because Sid drives up in his brand new motorcycle and says, Form an orderly queue, ladies. Oh, I love it. He pulls right up to the door. Yep. He practically does a donut in the middle of the soiree. Yep. <laughs> I love Sid so much. Yes. He gets better. He does. He's kind of tame in these first few episodes, but man, he shows up with that big grin wearing his helmet. Yeah. Ladies. Yep. <laughs> so when. When, Do when Father Brown goes to see Annie, she kind of throws him out and the old bitty sees. Well, okay, rewind. She doesn't want to let him in. Yes. Because he's going to ask her questions. She's hanging around in her nightgown, which to me is like, oh, maybe she's open for business. Maybe she's not so dedicated to Christy. I was like. And then I'm like, no, maybe she's just in her nightgown. I was uncomfortable that she was in her nightgown with Father Brown there. He fixes her taps, and she's standing there with her nightgown open. Yep. I'm like, he's a priest. Yeah. Close your robe. Hide your satiny things. Yes. He's a priest. Anyway, he starts to ask the tough questions. He fixes the she taps. She throws him out. She throws him out, and she does the smartest thing because she knows about nosy neighbors. Yep. And she's basically. <laughs> she puts on a production. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe you said those things to me. You're disgusting. It's the talkers who are the most deviant. And the biddies like making notes right there. <laughs> She's got her head scarf on, yep. hanging out her watch. Yep. Ooh, Mrs. M's going to hear about that. Speaking of Mrs. M, she's going to read to Bill, but Lady <laughs> F is going to read Lady, Lady Chatterley's, Chatterley's lover. lover to him. <laughs> <laughs> a book that would have been incredibly scandalous still yes. at that time. And she's just carrying it around with her flowers. Yeah. Mrs. M is there trying to be the most Christian and charitable. Like yeah. they have they have this charity off, but Lady Felicia is like, but he's good looking. What if he wakes up and he's like, <laughs> like, okay, you're on the make and he's in a coma. Yes. Back off, lady. <laughs> Come on, have some class. She, she needs to be driving on Sid's motorbike <laughs> downtown now. <laughs> Never mind. You're both sitting there taking good care of an evil Nazi. <laughs> Mrs. M must just be like, oh, I can't believe I, I read the Bible to the Nazi. The way she treats Father Frank, like yeah. the digs. Yes. Every dig. Every single dig. Every opportunity she can poke at him. Yep. Just... And she's sitting there reading to the actual bad guy. Yes. But that's the whole point, right? Is I imagine. You never know. I imagine that's, that Sid's grandma is just as sweet as she can be. Oh, I can imagine. And completely f is fooled by him and just thinks he's just the best boy. And would be like, oh, well, yes, I'll say that to the police. If you need me to, okay, darling, I can say that. Do you want $50 still? <laughs> <laughs> Wilhelm, who's thrown the priest from the train. Yes is actually a doctor. Yes. And that's why he offers to take care of Susie's hand. Yes. It doesn't explain why he kisses her, though. Ah, uh, because he's not a priest. <laughs> yes. Um, and the old biddies appear out of nowhere. <laughs> they <This> do. <laughs> town of old biddies. They can teleport to any scandal. 
Bring. <laughs> they're just there. They have to hold their hats, but they're there. <laughs> well, it's the power of the pucker. Yes. That helps them teleport. Somewhere there's something that needs to be judged. The mm. village of teleporting old biddies. <laughs> Puckered biddies. I think Mrs. M is the leader of the club. Uh, it, it wouldn't bother me so much, but they use it twice. Almost exactly the same way in this episode. If you had that power, wouldn't you use it? Yes. If you could teleport to Scandal, wouldn't you use it? Yes. Okay. So it, it comes out that Annie and the Rag and Bone Man are together, doesn't want to, uh, and that the guy in the train tried to put the moves on Annie. And Annie's like, no, not the priest, the guy in the train who was dressed as the priest. Yes. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Brown, Father <laughs> Brown figures it all out. It's not Doc Brown. That's no. the guy from Back to the Future. Yes. That would be yes. completely different. Yes. <laughs> And we have that great moment of Father Brown figuring it out. Aha! Aha! <laughs> <laughs> While <laughs> the fake priest takes off. Well, he has tried twice now to finish off the priest. Yeah. The Nazi in the bed. Yes. So he tries one more time. I think Father Brown lets him go. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. But before that, there's another problem with this town. Hmm. It is the teleporting old biddies mm -hmm. as well. So Father Brown, Father Frank, the fake Father Frank, which really should be the name of the episode. Wilhelm. Wilhelm runs out of the church mm -hmm. and Father Brown finds him. Mm -hmm. He steals Father Brown's bike. Mm -hmm. So Father Brown is left resourceless. Mm -hmm. But luckily, this town is full of crap children. <laughs> Who just leave their things lying around. By the church door. Who that's, could have tripped on that? That's what kids do. They just drop bikes. They just drop them. Well, there's more than a bike there. Did you see what else is there? No. A skip rope. This <gasps> is a dangerous combination. The teleporting biddies could trip on that. What would happen? They would teleport into a gravestone or something and die. <laughs> so there's a bicycle chase that leads to the uh, hospital Father Brown locks the door so that he can talk to Wilhelm. They really should have played either the Benny Hill music during the bicycle yes. race. Da -da 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 -da, yakety sax. Or the Wicked Witch of the West song. While he's riding the bike, chasing him. One of them should have been a little BMX bike. Yes. That would have been funnier. With, with um pink tassels yes in a basket <laughs> bling 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 so he basically tries to kill the nazi again mm -hmm. but instead the nazi guy is having a heart attack so he uses the wonder miracle cure cpr to save the nazi yes because father brown believes that he's a good man on the inside i don't i don't know how effective chest compressions would be on that rickety old bed i don't know either I also wondered, so Father Brown, we learn, was in the war. Oh, yeah. Do you think Sid would have been in the war? No, I think he would have been too young. Too young? Yeah. Because okay. I think he's like 20, so he would have been like 10. Yeah, he would have been like 10. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. M brings Susie some coffee. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. Yes. And Because for Mrs. M, Susie is a servant. Yes. I, it doesn't matter where she's from. And th this is the first like she constantly accuses Susie of being lazy. And so for her to bring her coffee is nice. And she could have easily, Susie could have easily said, you were aiding and abetting the Nazi and doesn't say that. No, because she was fooled. Lady F was about to jump in bed. With the Nazi, <laughs> Susie's a better person than Lady M is. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Yeah. The Ragged Mountain Bone Man and Annie drive by and everybody's so happy. The end. And Sid's like, I love you. <laughs> Annie gets to wear a bowler. Yes. I'm glad they didn't pursue the Susie Sid couple thing. I'm glad they didn't do that either. They're better as friends. Yes. Um, but I think it's sweet how nice he is to her. I think so too. It helps us understand that he's a good person. Yes. Who's just a little outside the law sometimes. He's naughty. He's not bad. Yeah, like he found a wallet with 50 bucks in the in the trash. And bought a motorcycle and right bought away. A mo motorcycle right away. <laughs> Who among us has not made a decision like that? We are not. Have you ever bought a motorcycle with money you found in a trash can? No. Okay. <laughs> Me either. 
I guess that wallet didn't have any ID in it. Yeah, I guess so. Because I think Sid is a good enough person that he would have come forward and said, okay, I didn't get the money from my grandma. I got it from a wallet. I found it in the trash, but it does have ID for Bill. Yes. I think he would have admitted it. Yeah. If that was the case. But that would have ended the episode. Yes, it would have. So. Instead, we get Annie and Christy riding on the rag and bone thing, starting a musical number or something as they ride off into the sunset. Yep, absolutely. Best corpse? Uh, there's only the one, and he doesn't really die. So Yeah, no one dies in this episode. He does a good job of laying around looking scratched. Yes. After the credits, I think Christy and Annie work it out, and I think they ride the wagon into the sunset, as I mentioned. Yep, I think. Where, where do you think uh, Dr. Frank goes Dr. Wilhelm. Hopefully someplace where he can create a new life and not have the Nazis pursue him and not have the Allies pursue him, and that's it. He finds a nice lady and marries her and settles down. There you go. Or becomes a Nazi hunter. He's off to Argentina. He could, he could do that. We've said Nazi a lot in this episode. <laughs> The main character who never speaks, the man in the tree that the episode is named after, is a Nazi. It's he, hard not to he mention. He has a it. pretty good gig to get second billing. In yeah, this he episode. does. He has to lay on a branch and moan yeah. and drip, and then he gets to lay in a bed. Yeah. That's it. That's what he has to do. Well, no, he talks Nazi stuff to the doctor. That's true. And, they do the reenactment on the train. In the train. He talks Nazi stuff to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> And he's not into that either. No. <laughs> it's the talkers. It's too far. <laughs> it's the talkers who are the worst. They're the worst. He's a good example of that. Yes. He's the worst. Yes. We all agree Nazis are the worst. <laughs> yes. That is, that is our big takeaway. Even if they're in a tree, they're the worst. The end. Oh, boy. That wow. is the man in the tree. So the next two weeks, what we're going to do, based on some feedback that we got from people. Thank you for that, by the way. Is we're going to do replay episodes five and six, which are the Eye of Apollo and the Bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do with this, because I love you listeners. I do. I love you. Is I'm going to rewatch the episode and then re-listen to our episode. Uh huh. And then make up a new intro and exit. For and them. I will also add some new recommendations. Yep. For some things that you can watch or listen to that you might like. So there'll be reasons to listen. And I'm going to pay particular attention to something if we missed it that we screwed up or something like that. Okay. So, though I don't think we ever do because we're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. Well, I am Tom Hanks. Um, actually, Pedant Corner says. Um, actually, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that I've used interchangeably CK, JK, RK, <laughs> WK. Chesterton. Chesterton. KK. You always get the last name right. Yes. Though. Oh, I hope you all, if you're in the U.S., you have a great Thanksgiving this week full of family and really good food um, and that you get to relax a little bit and have Absolutely. a little peace and quiet. Everybody so after, deserves that. After those two episodes, which include The Bride of Christ. But, the, let me just say, if you're not in the U.S., I hope you have a, an excellent week, too. Yes. I'm not just true. saying only Americans should no. have a nice week. No, everybody, everybody should. should have a nice week. Hey, Hoser. If, if I was to. The Canadians know I'm talking to them now. In, <laughs> in Canada, there's no holiday in November. Oh. Right? It's a long. That's a tough month. Dreary then. month. You guys have a bank October, holiday every month. October has Thanksgiving and Halloween in Canada. So the period of time from the 1st of November to Christmas is a dark days in Canada. Oh. The time changes, you know, you're north of the North Pole, it's <laughs> cold, <laughs> snowy. All you got is Timmy's Ed, to keep you it's, happy. The Leafs haven't got their gear going on yet. <laughs> there are other teams, you know. Yep. It's uh it's it's a rough time. Not as rough as February, which thankfully is another month with no holiday in Canada, no civic holiday. You're supposed uh, to just sleep through February, aren't you? There are, isn't that there what you're are supposed lots to do? of times in February in Canada I would walk to work in the dark, stay inside all day, walk home in the dark. Mm, it lovely. Just was darkness all the time well i'm trying to end this episode on a happy note mark yes so after that we will return with our holiday 
plans. Yes. Yes. I'll, I, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'll tell you what it's not. We're not doing a song We're this year. We're not doing a song this year. We're not. I'm trying to take it easy in November, in January, and February. We're going to do something else. Yep. But it's going to be awesome. Yes. Don't worry about it. It will be awesome. So. so that's something to stay tuned for. Anyhow, that is uh, this week's episode. We will see you for the next two weeks with some remixes, with some fun stuff added. And yep. then we'll see you after that. We will return on December the 11th, I believe, with, with new With brand episodes. new stuff. Yeah. Yes. December 11th is brand new stuff. All right. Until then, bye, Maniacs. Bye, Maniacs. <laughs> Never mind the fact that we missed Lady Felicia's Lady Felicia. Why do I have start so over? <laughs>